find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, strong, but I ain't starving yet. Chain for the pain, cocktail, dog, set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here with Sorgatron Media, where we uh, produce some uh, great shows with uh, with uh, uh, IWC, RWA, some uh, documentaries, etc. IndieWrestling.us. With me on also in the wrestling biz in some way is the voice of Inspire Pro Wrestling down in San Antonio, Texas. He is aiming to please Eamon Payton. How you doing, sir? That's wrong. Hello, Sorgatron. I, I've told you already on Twitter, we got a lot to talk about this episode. So I'm much. So excited. You've been anticipating this since I started Snapchatting on Saturday night from the sounds of things. So uh, yes, I can't wait. We'll get right into it. Of course, check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. This and, and so much other stuff. You subscribe to the Indie Mayhem Show and the other shows we do on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, Google Play Podcasting. Still trying to fit that into the flow. Uh, uh, iHeartRadio, uh, so many places, YouTube, Facebook. We've been playing with Facebook Live as well. So you might get a little notification on the Wrestling Mayhem Show page here on Tuesday night as we uh, kind of figure out where we want to go with that. Also, it drops us line 412-206-WMSMW. MS0 or good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com. Let us know indies that you think we should check out or people we should talk to or questions for people we've announced for interviews. And, uh, and actually, uh, a big shout out to Mario. I hope that I'll try to snag it here by the end of the show. Uh, but he let us know about some uh, uh, great uh, shows uh, happening, I believe, in the New York City area that we should check out. So uh, we'll give you guys a shout out for that as well. Uh, so let's get into it. Eamon, who are we talking to this week? Well, we got another returning guest this week, and it's a very excited uh, returning guest back here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Uh, this guy uh, is here to t- specifically to talk about uh, the stuff that happened this past week in the St. Louis area, but as well as a variety of other things. It's always great to have him back here on the Indie Mayhem Show. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Pistol Danger, Mr. Evan Jalistico. How are you this evening? Oh, I think you're muted, I think sir. he's muted. He's muted. He is muted in- Microphone. Yeah, I muted myself. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm doing really good. Um, I do Google Hangouts when me and my friends do video game club of the month. So it's just instinct. If I'm not talking, I clicked uh, mute. And uh, so sorry. Uh, I'm doing no, great. Actually, got this hat. I was gonna say Legos. you came. You came prepared. Yeah. I think last time I was dressed as Loki. Uh, so I think I'm doing pretty good. I can't. Definitely, definitely going for a good streak here uh, of your appearances on the Indie Mayhem Show. But yeah, uh, like I said, definitely great to have you back on. Uh, I definitely wanted to just start things off and, and talk about what happened this past weekend uh, uh, that you were involved in, which was St. Louis Anarchy. Uh, uh, great promotion out in the Midwest. I would say probably one of the leading promotions in the, in the Midwest when it comes to shows that are uh, going on in that area. Um, you had your go- uh, two going platinum events, your weekend of events. Uh just to start things off, I guess, how, uh, how did those events go? Uh, they went fantastic, actually. Before we do that, uh, he said you were the voice of Inspire. But he said it was in, in – he said, are you in San Antonio? I, right? I think he meant I am in San Antonio, Texas. Okay, because it was like – Company company is in Austin. Austin. Okay. He, okay. I was just like – I was really confused. I'm like, have I been going to the wrong shows? Like, have I been booked at Inspire? But like, We've, we've just they, been lying to you and telling you that's San Antonio. Yeah. Or just like I show up at some random other show and like this is, keeps like, where the fuck is Evan? Why is he here? He's no-showed the last year of shows. And I'm like, I'm here. I'm right next to the office, Max, man. Okay. <laughs> But no, yes, definitely. It's, it's right. important to clarify these things. Yes. Uh, particularly in indie wrestling. Yes, thank you. Okay, fair enough. Um, they went fantastic. Uh, TJP was there. Jonathan Gresham, who I actually already talked to Biss about a little bit. If uh, uh, Gresham's a good cat, man. Uh, so is TJ, but he's a little bit harder to get a hold of now because he's busy doing something. I don't really know what it is, but, you know. You, you may be wrestling in some sort of classic for cruiserweights. Yeah, I don't know. Some Mark's probably putting it on with a couple extra money. Tax return <laughs> season just happened, so, you know, Paul. <laughs> uh, so, but Gresham uh, is a good cat, and I'll always talk him up, and I'll always talk always talk highly of him. Definitely, and I, I've actually got to see him perform uh, once before in, like, a small show in Texas, and, and probably one of the best, like, technical wrestlers on the independents right now, and then 
from all I saw from social media, he seemed to have a great weekend with you guys uh, uh, at Save the Anarchy. He did. My only complaint is that he's kind of dropped the octopus thing. Yes. And I thought that was fucking awesome. And but now he's just John Gresham, and that's cool too. But like, come on, like he'd come out like half cracking looking, and I was like, this is this is the coolest thing ever, man. Hyperbole aside, it was pretty cool. Absolutely. Uh, and it seems like uh, a lot of people have petitioned, uh, at least what it seems like from social media response and how St. Louis Anarchy has responded that uh, he may be in line for a future St. Louis Anarchy championship match. Uh, yeah, actually. And if you check the St. Louis uh, or Pierre's personal page, I can't remember. Uh, I think it was Pierre's personal uh, Facebook page. He announced that when Gresham comes back, he will get an Anarchy title shot. Awesome. So definitely good to see talent, uh, talents like him. Uh, uh, doing some good things up in the Midwest. And, and uh, overall, uh, uh, I know you're building up to uh, you know, one of your bigger events for St. Louis Anarchy, which is Circus Maximus. Uh, yes. and it seem, seems like things are very shaping up uh, pretty well, especially with that, uh, I guess, that interesting concept this year of uh, the whole us versus them thing. Can you go into that uh, sort of a bit? Sure. Us versus them. I, I've got to look up the date because I think I know the, the, the date for Circus Maximus, but I don't want to say the wrong one. Let me double check. Yeah, okay. August 26th and 27th is Circus Maximus. Um, I don't exactly know what Pierre's got planned as far as the points, uh, the points but um, Us Versus Them actually isn't a new concept for us. We used to do Us Versus Them back when we were the LWA. And what it was is we'd bring national-level talent to wrestle local-level wrestlers. And uh, such people that have been a part of it are um, uh, Claudio Castagnoli, now Antonio Cesaro, um, Tyler Black, now Seth Rollins, uh, Mike Quackenbush. Like, actually, you can go to Smart Mark Video and uh, look up St. Louis Anarchy, and you can find both us versus them. Um, mm. And it's just uh, so this is a bit of a different concept for it because it's a small um, bracketed. I, I don't even know if tournament's the right word, um, but a small bracket of um, us versus them. And originally, when we were talking about it. It was uh, it was a much bigger event. It was going to span um, probably the, the whole year because St. Louis Anarchy only runs probably every two to three months, and it's a double shot, like you said. There's always two shows, mm-hmm. and so it's gonna. We generally try and have eight events. So beginning uh, beginning in January or February is um, Gateway of Anarchy. After that is generally a show like Going Platinum then Circus Maximus, then I think we're going to make the Anarchy Rumble a main thing, and then Yuletide Terror. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think the what we talked about previously was uh, like a whole year of it. But in independent wrestling, that's quite hard to do. People get hurt. People have other bookings. Some people go to the WWE, uh, or they get signed with Ring of Honor or, you know, wherever else. So it's a little bit harder. So uh, here, put it down to a, a one weekend thing, and I'm actually very excited for it. Uh, I know Gary and Martin Stone have wrestled before, and uh, that's the first match announced, and uh, they tore it up. So I'm excited to see what they do at St. Louis Anarchy. Yeah, and I believe that would be Martin Stone's debut for St. Louis Anarchy, uh, if I'm not Ooh, mistaken. Yes. Uh, as well as I know, uh, Chip Day was another one that was announced uh, along with him um, uh, for that event, and and. Uh, it seems like it's shaping up to be a very, very interesting card. Uh, and, and like you said, they'll, uh, they'll be meeting Gary J uh, in a captain's battle. So they'll be captaining the two teams uh, this year. So uh, definitely very interesting stuff. And like you mentioned, uh, that's August 26th and 27th. Uh, uh, and uh, definitely more information should be coming up soon on social media. So I would encourage people to go check that out and go follow St. Louis Anarchy and go um, support them. Um, I also wanted to dive into some other stuff that uh, you and Pierre Abernathy, as you mentioned before, are doing across the independence, so to speak. Um, uh, I, the one that I got I got to talk to you about and got to get your thoughts on. Obviously, you're part of a, a group called The Commission in a place yes. called Metro Pro Wrestling. Uh, and I know on their upcoming event, uh, I believe on June 4th, uh, you're in an eight-man tag uh, teaming with uh, Axe and Smash to Demolition. Demolition, it's awesome, isn't it? It's 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 something. I I, ne- I never thought that would be the pairing I would imagine in my head, but it's kind of a perfect pairing of you and Pierre and, and, and Demolition. I know, right? It's uh it's pretty fantastic. Um, Demolition is probably one of Pierre's favorite tag teams, actually. So this will be 
quite a Christmas come early uh, present. Um, the last time we got to wrestle, uh, I don't even know if wrestle is the right word, but interact with a former uh, high level uh, WWF tag team did not go great for us. And uh, this looks to be a lot better. Mm. Interesting. And, and I believe that uh, it's uh, you, you and Pierre Abrathi, the commission with Demolition, against uh, Davey Vega, friend of the show, uh, Mike Seidel, brother of Matt Seidel. Uh, and I think the, I can't recognize the other names here, but. Uh, Geek Thing uh, and uh, Kyoshi, I believe, are the other two. Okay. We're all part of a, a little stable of nerds that uh, the Geek Sing runs. <laughs> So definitely, and, and that'll be a very interesting event to say the least. Uh, uh, I think de- I think demolition teaming with uh, the commission slash submission squad slash you know <laughs> whichever you want to go by is is definitely there's money on the table there. So I uh, encourage fans uh, to go check out the uh, Metro Pro. Uh, I, I guess kind of a fun question to ask in terms of that is is it, maybe not even in the case of a tag team, but is there any wrestler from the past in like that? in this kind of scenario that is kind of your dream, like be either teaming with or against, or, or is there any like kind of bucket list wrestler from sort of maybe that era? Glacier. <laughs> it's always Glacier. Um, I almost got to meet him when we get, did King of Trios the first time, but I did not get a chance to cross paths with him, but he will always and forever be uh, my dream indie uh whatever you know team with wrestle against get managed by just him <laughs> on the show doing karate with me is what i aspire to be i i always you see i've, I've obviously i didn't watch wrestling in that area but i've gone back and watched old glacier matches and i never understood why people disliked him like <laughs> i don't know like he was like he was different like at no point will i ever say glacier was a phenomenal wrestler but I will say he served his purpose and he was different at a time where not a lot of things were different. Mm-hmm. Um, he was brought in to be part of Eric Bischoff's like karate league that he wanted to get started uh, in WCW and it didn't pan out well, but thankfully he stuck around and uh, yeah, I don't know why people hate on him, man. He's just super, he seems like a super chill dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I see what you did there. Thank you. And uh I don't know. Seems silly to me. There's so many worse characters in wrestling that you could probably shit on. And people always pick Glacier. I'm like, nah, he's the man. Even even some of the wrestling guys. I I, I mean, I'll watch his matches and see. I've seen much worse than this. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Especially on, on televised level. Yeah. Like, by no means, I don't think, like, was he, uh, like, he was always like, you know, naturally a karate guy, but like, I think he incorporated things well. Like his original finisher wasn't just a super kick. It was a spinning heel kick at first mm-hmm. and it looked awesome. And he just, no, nah, it was cool. He was sub zero and he was wrestling and he was combined. And that's what I liked about him. So. Absolutely. So maybe one day, one day that will happen. Uh, wrestling will. Out there, let's make this happen. But, uh, uh, going also off of, uh, uh, the stuff you and Pierre are doing because you're obviously, I mean, you you are the commission in, in Metro Pro Wrestling, but also you're doing stuff elsewhere. Uh, we mentioned Inspire Pro Wrestling. You've come down this way uh, to Austin, Texas, not San Antonio, uh, 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 for a good part of a uh, almost uh, going on a year now. Uh, yeah. And uh, you have to been uh, uh, doing some pretty interesting stuff uh, as of late, uh, uh, particularly with uh, uh, your little trainee, uh, uh, Barrett Brown, another friend of the show. Yeah. Um, We've got a couple trainees. Uh, Barrett's probably our biggest prodigy. Uh, we've got Austin Blackburn, who, uh, if you look up FIP, mm-hmm. he teamed with me and Gary in the uh, trios tournament. Uh, Everett Connors is on our team in uh, Granite City, uh, where the show is actually team based. So the Submission Squad is a full team there. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, at Inspire, it's a really good time uh, taking Barrett under our wing. Uh, like the proud pop as we are. Uh, and we're just excited to see what he's doing uh, so far. He hasn't done so great, but with a little bit more guidance, he's going to be exceptional. Oh, I, I, I hope he does reach that point where as Pierre put, uh, where he's wrestling 60 minute broadways with Terry Funk, like, like Pierre did. 
I mean, I think if that happened, bro- probably Terry Funk would die. But, you know, I mean, maybe six minute Broadway's with Terry Funk, you know, that's fair. something where, uh, you know, uh, recently I've been trying to get in contact with a couple of different uh, names from outside the country for Bear to Wrestle to give them a little bit of more, uh, an international flavoring, if you will, mm-hmm. and give them a small smackerel of what the rest of the world has. Um, because Barrett actually, uh, after talking with him, hasn't really traveled outside Texas too often or too much. And as we all know, Pierre and I are globe trotting. What's the correct way to do it? Uh, Playboy philanthropist geniuses. Okay. So we're hoping we can help him out a bit like this. This hat I got in Morocco. And a lot of, a lot of great professional wrestling in Morocco, you could say. Yeah, well, not a lot, but enough that we're there some, from time to time. We were there for the Don Morocco 1989 Invitational turn, Tag Team Tournament. I, I that, that would make a lot of sense for the tournament to be there. Yeah. Uh, so that, that, that kind of fits perfectly. Um, but yeah, and, and I encourage people, uh, for those that don't, haven't seen uh, your, your training methods with Bear Ground, to check out uh, 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 on Inspired for Wrestling on YouTube. Uh, and 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 there's some stuff of uh, uh, you and Barrett showing Barrett the uh, uh, the ropes, I guess, so to speak. I believe you walked him in the trunk of your car at one point. No, no. Um, what that is is actually that's um, that's what we like to call the road sauna. When you can't always stop at a gym and hit the sauna, uh, you know, sometimes like I'll lay in the back seat with my shirt off, and uh, we'll have a convertible, of course, and I'll just catch sun that way. That's an that's a that's a roadside tanning bed. And, uh, you know, sometimes you need to sweat off a little extra weight and you just put yourself in the trunk. I mean, you know, Kabuki did it. I don't know. Uh, Harley Race did it. You know, all the Von Erics did it. It was weird because they would all fit in one. But, you know, that's what they did. They were a family. Cars were just so, back then. Yeah. So, I mean, no, it's just it's just another way to travel and maybe save a little extra money on the road, you know? That's a good way to look. I mean, it's, it's good that you're taking somebody, you know, who's – you know, uh, in fairness, a little young, a little impressionable, Bear Brown, and, and and showing him the right way of things. So that's always nice. It's always good to see in wrestling. I'm a giver. What can I say? Absolutely. Uh, and I kind of wanted to trans- – this is actually a good way to transition into uh, – uh, uh, obviously, the show is about sort of the general world of independent wrestling. And uh, uh, you've been doing this for a little while now, and you've – like you said, you've traveled to, you know, across the United States, Morocco even – um, yeah. uh, what do you think of the state of indie wrestling right now? Uh, uh, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that's been happening, uh, uh, and and we've mentioned many times in the show, even indie wrestling kind of bleeding almost into the mainstream now, especially with the stuff we're seeing uh, with WWE. Um, uh, what do you think of of how things are are going and and looking for independent wrestling? Well, it's it's an interesting thing. Like I had a small conversation with Byron Wilcott. Um, about how wrestling actually can't like wrestling can't work together because in its very nature it's a competition um and while i i i don't entirely agree with that i think i think everybody has a place in wrestling and whether it's in the ring holding a camera uh you know doing commentary buying a ticket I've been on mm-hmm. some shows where people, you know, should buy a ticket. Um, I think it's going now better than it, it has been in a long time. Um, here's like an odd thing. So Marlon Wayans just gave uh, Full Impact Pro a shout out. Mm-hmm. And that's something like, what? Where does that come from? Like, <laughs> you know, with WWE, you know, scouting the indies for the better part of a turn to get their global cruise away or just to fill in kind of next NXT spots it's a good time to be on, on the independent level, especially to get your, your name out there to get recognized more. Um, I feel that a lot of the smaller independents or me, like everybody's kind of taking a step up. I don't feel too many people take a step back. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of, how I feel like I, I feel everybody's stepped up. I don't really see a lot of regression. I see a lot of progression in wrestling, which is good. Definitely. And, and, I, I feel almost also like the mindset, uh, you know, kind of looking at indie wrestling and sort of in the mid 2000s, uh, uh, a lot of, I feel like, the, at least the express mentality was almost this kind of underground feel and kind of a, uh, you know, 
fighting the machine almost kind of sort of way companies were portraying themselves of like there's we're not WWE almost. Uh, uh, and it almost feels like they've kind of blend, not blended completely, but uh, have been more focused on ident- on their own personal identities. Would you would you say that would be the case? Yeah, I think everybody's trying to to do what they can to build their own brand now. And um, whether it works or doesn't, I think it's something new. It's something interesting. Like um, around this area for a long time, people tried to associate with the NWA, or and like you know, do that. And then like, I'm not saying you shouldn't associate with the NWA or one way or the other, uh, but not a lot, like, I don't see a lot of people doing that anymore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody is forging their own way, like inspire. They drop the NWA and they're forging ahead. Um, so I think it's a good thing. I think people branding themselves and finding their own paths is a good thing. Mm-hmm. And I would even drop companies like, uh, like, just something that comes to mind is like a freelance wrestling or um, uh, I think of also like a Lucha Ravoon in California where it's almost like more than just like your traditional independent wrestling show and they're branding it as sort of like a, a, a more of an experience. I know when uh, uh, we had Bryce Rensberg on last, he talked about the whole idea of Chikar Pro being an experience that's built and not just an, an independent wrestling show that's sold by a car, so to speak, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, St. Louis Anarchy is – isn't so much a, a wrestling event as it is just a party, like something to come and have fun with, have some drinks, meet up with some friends. Like it's a good time. Um, Beyond wrestling is its own very different experience. Uh, as someone who was just recently a part of it again, mm-hmm. uh, I was I was kind of a Beyond original. I'm kind of the black sheep of it. They like to say Vega was an original. I was just as much of an original as Vega was. Mm-hmm. Um, tier one wrestling also up that way is a lot of guys that I got to personally meet. And they seem to have their own different style of doing things. And I really like that. Um, again, Full Impact Pro. Uh, Metro Pro in Kansas, bringing in demolition. Yeah. You know, having fun. Um, so from the places, like, I don't wrestle as much as I used to uh, by choice. Uh, I'm too old and I'm too tired. And, uh, you know, just I'll get you next time, kid. Or, you know, it's great experience or exposure. I don't really care. Suck it. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, I, I, I do well enough on my own that I don't need your exposure. Um, so I think, yeah, wrestling is, is like everybody's starting to find their own niche and it's a good thing. Absolutely. Uh, I, I guess another way to kind of lead this off, and I think we asked you this question the last time you were on the show, but I, I, yeah, I would like to get your answer again, uh, you know, months and months later. Uh yeah, so now sort of we've talked about companies, but also maybe specific names. Uh, who are some names right now in the independence that you think people should be watching right now and should be keeping uh, eyes on? I don't suppose you have who I said previously, so I can make sure I didn't mention them again. <laughs> you could mention them again. I mean, it, it's it's fair if there's it's fair if there's some repeats. Okay, uh, well, just uh, let's go local, and then I'll kind of spread out. Uh, local in our area, there's a uh, Michael Elgin has a school, and he's got a lot of good kids coming out of it. Uh, Ever Connors and Austin Blackburn, who, as I also mentioned, are part of the submission squad. Uh, Sean Orleans, who's slowly making a name for himself. Uh, around here, he doesn't get to wrestle as much because he's such a utility player that he is so essential. Um, so, so a little backstage to just St. Louis Anarchy. Uh, I'll give you this. Uh, Pierre told me that. Uh, Five positions canceled. Staff members, not wrestlers. Smart Mark couldn't make it, so there goes camera. The ring announcer couldn't make it. We had a cancellation of referees, and then um, what were the other two? I can't. There were there were one or two more, and I can't remember. So mm-hmm. night one, Sean uh, was going to referee, but then we found thankfully Tully to referee. Or Tully was already there. Uh, he wasn't going to be there night two. So Sean got a suit. And he ring announced, and he's he's amazing at that. So one position filled. And then the next night, he had to do refereeing because we didn't have one. So <laughs> he's pretty much um, – he's the utility player, man. He's, he's the MVP. Um, so that's three. Um, trying to think of people that don't really get out that should. Uh, 
I would say, because I was going to say a lot of people from the same as Anarchy particularly seem to be guys that are kind of making their way towards, you know, different parts of the United States as well. I think of people like, you know, even guys like the Hooligans, uh, Viking War Party, uh, uh, guys like that, that are kind of traveling a lot and, and doing different stuff. Yeah, I mean, St. Louis Anarchy, like a uh, uh, small tangent, if, you, if you'll indulge me, totally. has, uh, has been a pretty good jumping off point for a lot of people. Um, you know, most notably, I guess I'll say ACH. Got to start at ACW in Texas. Oh, before even then, he was wrestling and then came there and then moved up to St. Louis. He lived with Pierre. Um, and he gives all the credit in the world to Pierre, obviously. But, uh, you know, Pierre taught him how to craft an email. And he re- Pierre drafted the first email ACH sent to, to Delirious to get a job at Ring of Honor. So <laughs> look where he is now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, you mentioned the hooligans, the Viking War Party. Like, n- at no point did St. Louis Anarchy make anyone. Like, people make themselves. St. Louis Anarchy gave them a platform to improve, hone, and master their craft. Vega, obviously, is a huge one. Vega, Fitchett, uh, Gary, me, you know, everybody that's come through St. Louis Anarchy. Uh, you'll really start to like Zach Sawyers once he becomes a, a bit bigger. He's phenomenal. Um, God, there's so many guys. Uh, so okay, so so let's 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 move. Let's leave the Midwest. Uh, people that I think sh- more people should look at. Um, I already mentioned Jonathan Gresham, but he's kind of known. He's he's an international traveler already. Um, from Florida, there's. Uh, uh, I don't want to say his name wrong. Sh- Aaron Solo, <laughs> I'll say. Jason Cade, thanks, sorry. Uh, mm. I, I always think Kincaid for some reason, but that's a whole nother guy. <laughs> that's uh, a, I believe that's a Tennessee guy. <laughs> yeah. Martin Stone, who's, who just left NXT and who's making his name again in the Indies. Uh, there's Rude Boy Riley, uh, Sonny Kiss up in the New York area. Um, man, there's just so many good people. Like These are the ones that I can just think of off the top of my head. Uh I'll always like Ethan Page. Uh, he's, he's just a cool guy. He's a good wrestler. Uh, Josh Alexander's back, and that's fantastic. Um, see, Ricky Shane Page, I'll always say. Uh, I mean, really, if you don't know, like what I would recommend to people is to go to Smart Mark Video, find a show that you know just about nothing about mm-hmm. with people you have no idea I mean, don't, you know, go to Uncle Bumpkin's Country Jam Pro Wrestling Slambery at the back of the Apple Mart, you know? <laughs> like, look into the, 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 the name of the promotion. Make sure it's worthwhile. San Luis Anarchy, obviously, worthwhile. Find shows like that, and then find shows where maybe you don't know everybody. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you get a PWG show, and you know it's going to be good. You get a Chikara show, you know it's going to be good. Like... Find something like a St. Louis Anarchy or a Tier 1 or a Full Impact Pro, uh, you know, Inspire Pro. Find something that you, you don't exactly know and watch it. You know, if you're willing to spend 30 bucks at a WWE live event for one T-shirt, spend 30 bucks on two or three shows, like a video on two or three video on demands mm-hmm. at Smart Marker, anywhere really. Just, uh, you know, and make your own choices. Like, Find the people I just named and watch them or, you know, make your own choice. Totally. I think that's a good way of being a good way to kind of, you know, approach indie wrestling for any fan. Uh, definitely. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Uh, Evan, you're welcome to join us for some more discussion because we have plenty to discuss, uh, especially with Sorg, about his weekend. Uh, oh, I will. Uh, but, but quickly, uh, if people want to find you on the internet, where can people find you? Uh, and, and any upcoming dates that you're wrestling as well? Uh, if they want to find me, they can find me on Facebook at Evangelistico on Twitter. It's pistol underscore danger. Snapchat is pistol danger. Uh, Instagram pistol danger. My steam ID is pistol danger. My Wii U ID is pistol. My Nintendo ID (laughs) is pistol danger. There's an ongoing theme here. You can understand, uh, my Twitch stream, which I'll probably be starting to do tomorrow. I have to finish out alpha protocol, uh, is pistol danger. Like, You'll find me. Mm-hmm. If you can find one thing, you'll find the rest. My YouTube channel is Evangelistico, where I play with myself or I play with my friends. 
Um, you know, maybe just come over. We'll watch some Disney movies. <laughs> it's been a while since I've watched Incredibles. Uh, so there's a, there's plenty of places. Also check out uh, at St. Louis Anarchy. Uh, St. Louis Anarchy also just got a new web page, which is uh, stlanarchy.com. Mm-hmm. So there's plenty of places to find me at, and there's plenty of things to support that I love. And, you know, if nothing else, buy me Legos. As you can see behind me, I've got a small little smattering of what I've got. I've got like three shelves full. That's a daily off this right here. Let's see if I can get it. This is the Daily Bugle Lego set. This is a build a figure Marvel bleh, Marvel Legends build a figure Apocalypse. This is the whole Guardians of the Galaxy line from Lego. Basically, just buy me Legos. <laughs> Send him Legos, please do. Go go uh, show that Evan just goes working and bring him Legos. I will surely appreciate that. Yeah. Um, but uh, thank you again, Evan, uh, for talking with us. We'll be right back with more from Evan Jalistico uh, uh, on the Indie Mayhem Show. But we're going to take a quick look uh, at Liz uh, uh, talking with us at the 10-year uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show anniversary. Uh, we're going to check that out, and we will be right back with more Indie Mayhem Show. Wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Wait for the perfect time. I had a lot, actually. Um, before, before Mayhem, I was this shy college student like staying in my home and all that st- staying in my uh, my dorm all that stuff but I-, I now have the confidence to talk to talk to people talk to on the internet talk to my let's play channel just talking to people is actually a lot better now than it has been so I, I do thank them for that uh, and the people behind me as well the Lunch boxes, the Dutters, the Missies, the even the Jens over there, and the Carlinses. But yeah, it, it's 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 a fun time to be here. I mean, be 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 around for the Mayhem Show. Hey guys, Indy Mayhem Show Sorgatron here. A great interview, of course. Uh, Amen to please still with us from san antonio not austin with inspire pro and evan jalisco not waiting in a parking lot wondering what wrestling show he's at is uh with us still as well thank you for uh, uh sticking with us hat and all i was snapchatting your hat earlier so <laughs> thank you good hat it's uh the, it's the hat i used uh when i got it in morocco mm-hmm. i use it for when i cosplay as john hammond and i'll just stand outside certain areas and just be like welcome to Burger King, <laughs> you know, somewhere. Perfect. Uh, but uh, speaking of Snapchat, uh, uh, Eamon, apparently, uh, okay, I talked about I'm going to find wrestling on these trips that I have to go on for business, right? And I found Cause some. Because to, to, to briefly sum up the stuff we talked about in the past few weeks, because uh, uh, you went to Tennessee uh, not too long ago uh, yeah. on, on business and wanted to see wrestling. Uh, and, and you, uh, the closest you did was come across a poster. Um, uh, uh, funny enough, featuring uh, uh, Evan Julisko's one of Evan Julisko's favorite wrestlers, Jeff Jarrett. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can watch, mm-hmm. uh, I think, the first episode we ever recorded with Evan where he talks about Jeff Jarrett. Yep. For yeah, certain we, reasons. Yeah. I'm no slap nut. <laughs> Right, right. So I, I found one, and there was there's several choices, and we talked about SoCal Uncensored that I, I found out thanks to uh, Alex Cars and and his friends in California when I was out there for uh, <laughs> taping. Um, and um, you could say what taping it was. I know, but it's but funnier it when we say it doesn't pu- mess up your NDA, Sork. I, I I don't know. I wish they'd send me the NDA so I can know what what it was what it was. They just like here it says da 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 uh, X here. It's like okay, uh, it, but it's, anyways, it's Lucha Underground for those that. <laughs> I want them to figure it out. But anyways, so I went to a show and I picked the show that was 20 minutes away and not the one that was an hour and 10 minutes away because, you know, it made sense. And plus it was another 40. That, that's from my hotel. It was another 40 to where I was working. Um, so And plus I think it was like five o'clock and I wasn't going to be done by then. So I picked this show. I was concerned about this show, and I think what did I say on the show last week that I it was a bad that I was going to ultra violent show and hoped not to see blood. That's probably a bad idea. So, yeah, well, you know, yeah. I mean, I was close. It was actually close. It was actually really, really close. And then, and then, and then it wasn't. Amen. You saw my Snapchats, and then kept started messaging me. We, I cannot wait to talk to you on the show. 
what did you because i can't remember why i snapped uh of of this what did you see that intrigued you so much all i remember is uh uh two guys i'm not gonna call them luchadors um <laughs> Uh, wearing luchador masks, uh, coming out to one came out to Rey Mysterio's WWE entrance theme. Uh, the other one, I, I believe you mentioned, came out to Shane McMahon's entrance theme yep. for some reason. Here comes the money. Like, like I love it's it's the oh, most yeah. like 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 and and, and so you mentioned on this show like 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 you used to do, do backyard wrestling. Yep. Like like that's something like it's very much like oh I'm I'm gonna come out to this song the like. W- the one guy that was like he was named as like some hardcore violent something 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 and he came out to the raw nickelback theme i was like nickelback really you know i i just it just kind of threw me uh, a bit there um no so i i I found this show it was um um oh i think it was eww was was the fed uh that can't be right because that spells ew Anyways, uh, but uh, it was it know. was it was sun it was in Sun Valley, California, which is kind of a northern suburb. It seems of of Los Angeles, and uh, and again, I, I saw the poster. We talked about it last last week. Um, you know, it was it it, it advertised this ultra violent, uh, ultra violent match and best in ultra violence and and a street fight and and all this stuff and a lucha libre match. Okay, it kind of delivered, sort of. They're in mass. Um, so, and and I have this shared, and I think you guys can see my my images here. So at least you can react for our audio people. Uh, this is what I, I I showed up to. Um, I did count. This is at a VFW, and uh, I did count. Uh, presumably sixteen paying attendants. Oh, I didn't pull that up for everybody else. Uh, but uh, yeah, about sixteen uh, paying attend. No, oh, that's wrong too. Let me set up so everybody else can see it here. Uh, there was about 16 people, and I, I don't think I've been to a wrestling show that had this few people to it, which I was like, okay, we're, might, we might be in trouble here. Uh, <laughs> so there you go. There you go. Yeah, and, 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 and there was a gaggle of kids in the back that I presumed belonged to most of the wrestlers. Uh, yeah, the, the, that's, probably fair, that's, that's probably a fair guess. Yeah. And another one of my favorite of the Snapchat that Sorg sent was a guy getting thrown into a wall, uh, like one of the walls of the VFW, and then this like maybe five year old kid, like like clearly like getting too close to try to see if he was okay, like, <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it's pretty bad. It's it's um, so Sorg, I'm so glad you went to this show. <laughs> I am I'm too. Excited. So yeah. Uh, now now I only paid ten dollars. And sat wherever I wanted to, like literally, like I think I could have jumped in the ring and nobody would stop me. Um, and, and but I gotta say, I got my ten dollars worth of entertainment for all the right and mostly wrong reasons. Um, and I don't, and I don't mean to like, like you know, kind of harp on this show to make fun of it or anything. It was just like it's just an interesting situation, right? The wrestling wasn't horrible. Um. It's better than some shows that are better attended that I've 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 been to in several years, right? Um, it was just a just a very curious mix of things. Um, the and I hate to say this because this sounds like a joke when I say it, and I tweeted this as well. I, I you you saw the tweet about the ten bell salute, right? I did not see this. It was the ten bell. This this gets to you know. So they did a ten bell salute of uh, with China. Um, for China, Balls Mahoney and like the DJ's brother that apparently had, had passed recently, which just seemed like weird, right? Yeah. And then I found out the DJ was in the main event and it is Mr. California <laughs> in the ultraviolet match. Um, so that threw me. There was no like, hey, we're taking intermission. People just kind of disappeared after four matches. But there's also the thing with the cops that I'll explain in a moment too. Um, <laughs> and, and, and there's just like, like just these odd just odd little things they're just like what i know there's just 16 people but you don't know all 16 people here you really want me to come back in two months when you have another show right um so th- that i thought was was fairly curious um but anyways so the video that i, I, I and there was the video that i show, shared on facebook of the sun valley street fight um i i hey mean i think you watched this one right i did um yeah 
<laughs> we should, but um, so basically, it, so they went to the street. They actually did go to the street, um, and and they were out there for a bit. And and one there was a luchador like yelling at buses uh, in, in the middle of the street at one point. Uh, you can check this video is posted over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook uh, group. Um, they're, they're, those are the kids that you were talking about um, holding the, the flashlights up, by the way. <laughs> and, and then there's the uh, the luchador guy uh, going out into the middle of the street and yelling at people and their bus going by. Um, but there was a point where they're, they were fighting and they said, oh, shit, cops, everybody go inside. The wrestlers were saying this. Um, and and there, I looked and there was a cop across the street. I, presumably, had, I think he had just pulled somebody over. I don't know if they were. But that's when like we came back in. They fought to the bar and they told everybody not to go into the bar. And and like everybody disappeared for 15 minutes. And I'm like, is the show over? Did Are we hiding from the cops? What exactly is happening right now? Is this a sting operation? Is this a sting operation? About? What am I getting into? And this is one of a couple of situations as I was traveling where I'm like, am I in trouble here? You know, and you're in a new state. Am I going to need an alibi? Yeah. The other one included. The other one was about about parrots in in San Diego, and that's a whole other story that that's not for this podcast. Um, but uh, uh, they came back from intermission, did some more matches. Um, I think they were waiting for the guy to come out uh, after a screw job finish. And there was just like this guy that, that seemed like he was old luchador. Um, Eamon, you, speaking of the backyard, remember when we wore, remember that video that was going around when we wore a lucha mask and, and, and pretended to know Spanish and, and, and did like a, a lucha match? Well, um, I, remember, I remember Sweaty Snatch. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's what this match was. Um, I, I, anybody in a mask, their, their Mexican Lucha heritage was questionable in my mind. Um, and yeah. <laughs> like the one guy I thought was like trying to be the Scott Steiner of Lucha, uh, it, the way he was yelling. Um, so that was odd. It is like, it seemed like more and more as they got to the end of the match, it was more just swear words than, than, than Spanish. Um, mm -hmm. but there's that. Um, now I do commend them for the street fight coming back later in the show that okay. like they were just between matches all of a sudden you hear something and they start fighting in through that front entrance again and finish the match so they did the they did the chikara thing yeah the chikara. yeah basically they did the, the, chikara, the chikara spot where they fought outside for like a match and then came back the next day for the next show and were fighting in and it was like a 24 hour like like time limit something or other. I do remember that. I do remember that. Also, by the way, I just noticed that I misspelled your name on your title. So apologies for that. Uh, but, <laughs> Thanks, Sorg. You haven't known me. That's for okay. It, well, I have to retype it every week. So right today you're Eamon, Eamon Patron, uh, but that works. Uh, but uh, And then, of course, there was the ultraviolet match, which um, it was a light... It, the, the, I think they called it flaming light tubes. Nothing was flaming, by the way. Uh, I've never <laughs> seen I've never seen a light tube match where they've actually covered the ring with a tarp. For I this? have. You have. It's, uh, it's to save the canvas. It's to save the canvas. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Juggalos <laughs> didn't give a crap about the canvas. Apparently, whenever I'd watch <laughs> that stuff. So. Um, <laughs> But uh, but no, yeah, they 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 were very they're very cautious about that canvas, um, and they had some some light tube situations, and um, uh, yeah, Mister California versus I don't know what that guy's name is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I okay, I've seen some like I said, I've watched Strangle Mania, I've I've saw I've seen some some JCW deathmatch stuff, uh, uh, some CZW and everything. Right? Oh, that was a good mid break picture actually. Um, I, but there was definitely some new stuff that I had not seen here. I got a slow motion shot of this guy falling on glass. That was cool too. Um, <laughs> I was having a lot of fun with my phone over this weekend. Uh, they had a knife. Somebody yelled at him. You're using it wrong. Uh, <laughs> was he trying to say, okay. So if he's using it wrong, was he trying to stab him with the other side of the no, knife? It, it's that like that thing where. Like you're sliding the side of the knife over somebody's face. You know what I mean? Like to oh, I I'm cutting saying. him, but not really. Like that 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 kind of thing. Um, but that, that was funny. Like like the one of the little kids, like the five year old, was yelling that at him. Um, also, I love that they're trying to gimmick this. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, 
Um, the blood was there. The blood was pouring out. Um, I, I, I posted a lot of pictures for you guys. If you're on the audio cast and want to see what we're looking at, I, I posted a pretty decent um, amount of them to, for, for visual reference there. Um, I got a great shot of this guy looking at my camera, too, while he's bleeding and stabbing a guy in the head. That was amazing. I think Not I got Mr. California. I think I posted it Saturday nights in L.A. got me like to that one um so funny, speaking of mr california kelly kyle a friend of amon's and i just posted a uh, flyer for mr california's july 30th show i think it was yep, oh really yep that's Russell what it was from w's own zandig in oh Adapt. no oh jeez. he said like he was talking about like he knew balls of mahoney and he done uh, uh a lot of these death matches all over and everything like that it just uh i don't know it was it was it was incredible it was incredible but uh, yeah like i said it was definitely entertaining uh the thing i'd never seen before um is the uh the syringes oh yeah yeah, he's used them before against uh, Eddie Money, I think, or uh, Fast Eddie. I can't remember. Which. There's uh, one of the Eddies. Um, if you want entertaining, look up Mr. California, the Californian Enforcers YouTube video promos. They are a treat. Oh God! Man. I don't want to give too much away, but there's one where he just walks out of a sex shop and cuts a promo. <laughs> so. Man. And be prepared for that bar to be super high. Oh, if you wanna, boy. If, maybe if you fo- follow our Wrestling Rancho Facebook page, we may post some of those. We will probably <laughs> post it. And, of course, there's the aftermath right there. There were thumbtacks involved, so so I didn't even flinch when they pulled them out on Extreme Rules the next night. Uh, so, <laughs> you know. This is dang. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, the proof that the uh, the syringes were real. They stuck them in the turnbuckle. Uh, I had to get that. Too. Oh, they didn't even stick them in each other. That's no, they did. No, there was a there was a one picture of uh, they stuck he stuck a syringe in each of his cheeks, which yeah, is that. you know like I'm like oh that sucks. And I realized like I've seen um you know I you know standing in line for the scare house in town they have like the kind of demented freak show thing going on where they're like you know pounding n- nails in their nose and all that kind of stuff. I'm like well mm. that's that's pretty soft core in comparison. Uh, so in sticking, you know, sticking, like, I was like, that's where I've seen it. I've seen that at Ozfest with the re- reptile guy, right? Mm. Uh, doing the syringe thing. So, yeah. You because know. I remember the last time I like briefly watched like deathmatch wrestling with like, it's some recent show where like a guy did a similar thing, but it was a pair of scissors through the tongue. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, I'm, about. I'm like, I'm cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm done for the night. Yeah. So that was my experience. Uh, like I said, the wrestling was interesting. Um, there was a, there's a guy in front of me. There's a guy in front of me. He's, he was, you know, you know, kind of a, kind of a younger guy. And he's, he like goes, he like looks back to me. He's like, have you ever been to this show before? And I'm like, dude, no. And I didn't like say, no, I'm not even from the state or anything like that. I'm just like, nah. Cause again, don't know what situation I'm in. I want to like really advertise I'm a tourist. Um, and, uh, and I'm like, nah, man. He's like, yeah, I saw a flyer, decided to check it out. So afterwards, I, I, I'm like, I'm like, you seem like you're in the kind of stuff we are. And I give him a card. I was like, take on the show. Uh, but no, so, so I had, I had kind of a watching buddy on this one. And we were both just like, see, see, this, see this is what we always talk about. Indie wrestling brings people together. So yes, exactly. It does. Exactly. I found the one other guy that spoke English and made friends with him. Uh, so uh, there was, yeah. Uh, but it was a blast. It was, yeah, this Mr. California. Like I said, I think it's EWW or uh, something like that. I think it is. Yeah. But uh, that makes sense. Extreme something wrestling, right? You know. Uh, you, but, you, you don't want to believe that they just named their company too. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Really you know, and I, sh- I stared at it all night. I'm like, I think, it, I think their initials were ew. <laughs> uh but uh yeah so that was my experience i i have a promotion earmarked in in rochester uh although i was looking and i think they might be actually a little too early for me to go to uh so if anybody knows anything in rochester new york the weekend of the 12th in june please let me know looking for something good and uh willing to drive uh <laughs> Probably up to about 45 minutes because I'm going to have to work the next day. But uh, let me know. Uh, uh, and, and I'm hoping we can I, I can get to see more wrestling. 
different wrestling than I caught in California. <laughs> and uh, uh, I was so sad because there were so many Lucha shows. Like they said, there was a Lucha show like like an hour or 10 away, but it was five o'clock on, on Sunday. And I'm like, I, I can't do that. You know, uh, logistically, uh, it just it just didn't work for me, I, you know, with the work and everything. But uh, but uh, uh, it was entertaining. It was interesting. I had a good time regardless. Uh, so that was my pro wrestling experience. And I think it lends itself to some of our past conversations uh, that we've had around uh, some of these promotions and everything like that. Uh, so there you go. They still, they still did a show in front of 16 people. They did, they did a show. They did a, 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 a fine show, you know, they did a thing. <laughs> they did a thing. They did a thing. They did that much. And, and, Again, you know, oh, and also randomly, just because I picked up a sticker, um, I was talking about on Wrestling Mayhem Show, Lucha Libre Taco Shop in San Diego is amazing. Um, not just gimmicky, it's some good food. Uh, so if you're ever down there, go check that out too. So um, that's what I got. Eamon, what, anything going on in your neck of the woods? Uh, not, not particularly right now in my neck of the woods. Uh, I would encourage, as, as people, uh, as we always encourage, to go to IndieWrestling.us and check out uh, the awesome Around the Indies column written by Matt Carlins, uh, who covers uh, everything that happened the past week in the world of independent wrestling, uh, including uh, results and and cool little stuff from Twitter and, and some graphic media that you can check out. Uh, it gives you a good gist of everything that's happening in independent wrestling. So I would encourage you to go check that out at IndieWrestling.us. Sure. Uh, and, and, and go, uh, like, do like Sorg. Support your local independent wrestling Go to a show, uh, like Evan just said earlier, go buy a DVD on a smart mode video or something related, mm. uh, uh, and go support independent wrestling because you may like what you see. Never know what or you're going to you discover. you may go to a show that's so quick to. <laughs> Take a risk. Take a risk. You know what I mean? Even if it wasn't something that I'm going to continue to to see and talk about, I got a good story out of it and some amazing pictures that you saw and Snapchats, apparently. So... Hey, I want to give a shout out to uh, Mario uh, that emailed the show. As I, I, I've been saying at the top of the show, we do read your emails. Do check them out. He did uh, uh, hit us up with a bunch of sh- stuff, a bunch of uh, groups that he follows out there in New York. Uh, House of Glory out in Queens, New York. Two uh, KW Pro in the Bronx, and there was one more he kicked me. BWF Bronx Wrestling Federation in Bronx, New York. So if you're in the New York City area, uh, uh, a lot of promotions out there for you to s- scope out. I wonder if uh, Mad Mike knew of any of these when he was hanging out uh, up that way. Uh, so uh, uh, go scope that out as well. Um, oh, this was interesting. I, it, it was it was weird to find wrestling in, in my wife's hometown when I was trying to find stuff for Rochester. Uh, unfortunately, not the weekend I'm out there or anything like that. But now, whenever we go visit her folks up there... I'm going to start looking for indie shows. <laughs> Be like, oh, can we duck out of your family's dinner? You know, go see. And and, and 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 a lot of people we know actually work up in the area. Like I saw Jock Sampson, RJ City, guys like that up up on those posters too. So so here's hoping we uh, connect on one of those some sometime in in the future. So um, awesome. I might even look at Erie for PWR shows whenever I go back home to Greenville. So yeah. Um. All right. Hey, uh, Evan. Uh, I think you have some more shows to plug as well, right? I do, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking them up on my phone. Uh, let's see. Well, I will say, go see uh, uh, Evan in uh, I guess a little less than two weeks to see him and Pierre Abernathy team with Demolition. Hell yeah! Metro Pro Wrestling. That's something you absolutely have to see. I'm excited for that. It, it, you were somebody was uh, I think somebody was putting down your 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 something comment on demolition in the chat room. Uh, uh, Amen. I I know it's 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 about a decade or two out of your range, but man, you got to know the demolition, right? I know. I know demolition. I know what demolition is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know what it yeah. is. I don't. I yeah yeah. They had one of the best themes going way back when. I could I could see that, yeah. Demolition yeah. was probably my favorite tag team for a good while. See, you and Pierre both loved them. Uh I was a Steiner Bros guy, but looking back on it, maybe they're a bit overrated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they threw shit they, they threw people around, so you know. 
It was awesome. Also a big Rockers fan. So yes, shows you what kind of wrestling fan I was when I was a kid. So yeah, bright colors, all about it. That's fair. <laughs> uh, let's see. My wrestling dates after the fourth in Kansas City. Uh, the 18th and 19th, I'll be in Atlanta for a tag team tournament with AWE. Then July 9th, I'll be at Pro Wrestling Championship Series in Granite City. That's not wrestling. That's my girlfriend's birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Plug for his girlfriend's birthday. You're, yeah, you're equally for your girlfriend's, your girlfriend's if birthday. Buy me Legos for her birthday. It's fine. She'll love it. <laughs> Awesome. Well, uh, on that note, uh, I think we've uh, talked all the indie wrestling fit to talk about and some that maybe wasn't. Uh, so please go check out, first of all, Pistol underscore Danger on the Twitter. Go hit him up. Let him know what Legos you should buy him. All that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. And the hat. There you go. <laughs> Amen to please at Amen Patron this evening, apparently on the graphic. Uh, the voice of Inspire <laughs> Pro Wrestling. Join us from Texas. And, uh, and I'm a Sorgatron. Check out uh, IndieWrestling.us, WrestlingMayhemShow.com, SorgatronMedia.com, and all the fun places, all the things going on around our internet world here. Thank you, everybody, for joining us in the chat room, Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com. We basically occupy the 8 p.m. Eastern time to whatever the hell we feel like it uh, on the East Coast. Uh, so, uh, uh, go join us. Uh, I think you're, you have a good range of about three or four hours where you can just jump into some wrestling talk here on the YouTube live. And we've been playing with the Facebook live as well here and there. I just can't do the long feeds like we do on YouTube, unfortunately. So thank you so much for joining us. Support indie wrestling. We'll see you guys next time. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.